Hey guys, how are we? Um, I've been away for a minute, uh, like all of us going through trials right now. But um, one of the biggest things we need to do is stay in prayer and intercede for each other. With Without a doubt, we must stay in prayer. And, you know, I, the whole course in the life of my channel... I've never had to put things together. I've just spoken on what I've seen and what I've been shown and what I can tie back to the scriptures. And recently I've been led to um, go over dreams I've had. And I've seen a sequence of them start to tie and be woven together that has given me even more discernment on things. And, um, you know, we have this... Uh, red star that has been seen by millions of people all over the earth at this point. Down in Australia, people are seeing it. South Africa, they're seeing it. Um, sooner than later, the whole world will see it and they won't be able to hide it anymore. And this signifies not only that we're in the, the last days, but it also signifies what's happening in the moves that nations are taking around the world. You know, especially when you look at what's happening in that country across the ocean towards Russia, all of that. Because if you think about it, where they are, they're able to look to the Northeast and see things coming sooner than we are in the West. And I do believe it's all part of a staged, staging event. Now, I was led to scripture and it has to do with Armageddon and it deals directly with the direction of the Northeast and it's uh, when the Antichrist is looking for the return of the Messiah, okay? He is looking to the Northeast for his coming. And in this passage, he is looking in fear in that direction. So that answers a question that I've had in discernment on many messages that I've been given and a lot of us have, have been given about look to the east, look to the east, northeast, that direction. I was given that scripture just the other day. I also have been in awe of all these dreams I've had where I'm, I know I'm underground for some reason. I know I am. Um, the dream of uh, that oily, smoky dragon that was chasing people in medical gowns and I was in the dream underground and I had to step between that dragon and the people. I had the dream of the zombies underneath the Vatican where they had green eyes. Okay, and there was people down there that were prisoner. And once again, we were getting them out in this dream. I also recently had a dream that ties in to what I believe is what people will call the seed war. Okay, I don't go down rabbit holes with that. I only share what I can prove and in the scriptures. Now, in this dream, and it goes, it was underground again. And I think that that symbolizes the underground thing is these wicked ones are operating there because they are terrified of what is coming from the northeast. So they are staging underground for to hide, to set up, do all their wickedness underground or their experiments, whatever. But they're also doing it because they're terrified of what's coming upon the earth for them. And I want to go uh, real quick to Psalm 21, verse 11 and 12 before I share this dream. Because I had this dream, then the next morning I was led to this passage. And in Psalm 21, verses 11 and 12, Yahuwah is saying, I will send my power and my might and I will wipe out their seed from the face of the earth and from among the seed of men. So you have the seed of men is there, then you have this other seed that Yahuwah is speaking about that totally separate. He, put, he draws a clear, distinct separation. Now what that other seed represents, I do not know, but I will share this dream because once again, in this dream, I was underground. And in the dream, 
there were men and a few women laying on these stone slabs. And these stone slabs had, like, they, they glowed in a way, okay? They weren't like normal rocks that we would see on the surface of the earth. And they were laying there, and there was a being in this dream who was wearing a cloak that had a very high collar. And I just got the symbolism this morning. Before I shared this dream, I saw a video of how the Queen of England and all the royalty back in old times would wear dresses that had high collars. And the, the being in the stream was wearing an outfit similar to that with this really tall starched collar, stiff collar. One thing that stuck out about this being was that it had a huge skull. I mean, probably four or five times bigger than a human skull. And it was very tall. We're talking maybe eight, nine feet tall. And in the dream, it was, it was floating. It wasn't walking, it was gliding. And it would glide it over to one of the men on one of these slab rocks. And it had a piece of glass in, it hand, in its hand that looked like an iPad, you know? And it looked at the glass, looked at the man and said, in the spirit, I heard it, it say, he is not ready. Then he glided, this being glided over to another one, another stone slab, looked at the man, looked uh, at the glass pad and said, this one is ready, prepare him. And then I never saw the face of this thing. I only saw it from the side and the back. And then uh, the dream ended. But it was underground. And then I, guys, I, I don't know how to put these things together, but... I've been praying and discerning over this one for now almost five days. But then being led to the passage in Psalm 21, verse 11 and 12, literally the next morning after I had this dream, you know, and I've been praying to the Father, praying to our Messiah, you know, for discernment. And that is, that is something that I also ask you guys for. Because... You know, I know that time is so short. And everything going on up in the heavens, you know, the nations right now roaring against each other. It, it is all part of the final, the, the final days. But then trying to warn people is very difficult. It's a difficult task. And a lot of it is people... There is something in people's minds that they know also. They can feel it in their heart. They, they, they are aware of what is happening, but they don't ever truly grasp it. That is only for the chosen. For those who, because they're being called to return and repent and turn their hearts and, and minds and lives back to the Messiah, back to the Most High. They're being called, but they're, they're not answering the call. And then there are those who are chosen who did not ask to be shown these things, but are shown these things. And then they are required and commanded to share them. Look, I love you guys. All right, I've been going through trials too. Ever since I started this channel, it has been one trial after another spiritually. Physically, spiritually, physically, spiritually, back and forth, back and forth. Right now I'm going through a physical trial. Uh, I don't know if it's an injury or what, but we need to pray and intercede on behalf of each other. You know, we need to, we must. That is our power in using the name of the Most High and His beloved Son, the one whom, you know, the perfect Lamb. But when they come back, I'm telling you, this red star that was seen down in South Africa, that red star, when I see it, I see it in my mind. And I know that, I feel the Father telling me, I am sending my Son with His envoy of angels to finish off the evil one. Because I believe that's what it's coming. The, the destroyer is coming to finish off the evil one in his kingdom. So that the true righteous kingdom can come. And I'll tell you, in these days, I'm just crying out for righteousness. Justice, righteousness. It's like I'm at, I'm at war against this world in my spirit, in my soul. Because I, I just can't, I can never reconcile with it. With all the things I know that go on behind the scenes and all the lies and evil. I can't reconcile with this world. 
And when I look at that red star, I feel like the Father's telling me, Sean, destruction is coming, but for my children and the chosen, you know, He will protect. He will set aside for the kingdom to come. And I was given another message I'll share later about that ties into the rapture and ties into, you know, the seals being opened. But the hour's late, guys. Stay in prayer for each other. I know you're going through trials. I'm in the middle of one right now. I didn't. But when the Father commands me to make a message, I make it. I push through for the sake of those who need to hear it. All right? Uh, stay in prayer. Don't be... Don't be uh, beating yourself up and, and wear yourself out because you're going to need to be strong for what is to come. The Father told me it's going to get a little bumpy. Like we're talking like when the heavens open up and these things come to pass and like I saw the angel in that one dream throwing a rock at earth, the Father was telling me it's going to get bumpy. But I am with you. I love you guys. Um, again, I, you know, I can't express that. I know, I wish that I had resources and power to reach out to each one of you. I wouldn't withhold anything. Because I truly know that what is mine is truly not mine. It is the Father's. And therefore, it is yours by the power of His might and His will. But, you know, I believe Jesus is coming with that red star. That comes and then you know, he's got to pull his people out. The red star and destruction comes. Then his kingdom comes. So keep looking up. I love you guys. We'll talk later. Bye.